Hi guys, this is Mark. In this lecture, we'll talk about the map component available in UI Builder. The map component, as you might have guessed, works with maps and specifically Google Maps. And it is rather dynamic. It has a lot of features. You can do quite a bit of uh, cool things with the map component, all of which are available directly through UI Builder, data binding and codeless logic. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can start using the component before you can start using. There is a, a little bit of a configuration element that, uh, or some steps that you need to go through. And once it is configured, then uh, all of the functionality becomes available. So let's just start using it. Uh, you will find Google Map component under general in the general toolbox here and uh, drag Google Map onto your page and the map shows up right away if you have configured it. If you have not, what you will see is uh, you will notice there's going to be a new tab called settings. And in here, when you go to settings, I already have my key in. That's why it, the, the map shows up. If you do not have it configured, you will see that there is going to be like an exclamation point and then this uh, notice here will be in kind of purplish, reddish color. There are three steps to configure your Google Maps API key. Uh, you will, they are all described in here. So you will just need to follow the uh, instructions that you find here. I will not demonstrate how to do it because once you go there and here I'm opening up Google's instructions, they are rather detailed. So I will not spend any time uh, describing what's already described. The bottom line is you will end up having an API key that looks like this. Put it in here. UI Builder will immediately recognize it. And if it is recognized, if there are no issues with it, then in the user interface, you will see map being rendered just like this. So assuming that you have gone through the configuration steps, what I would like to focus on in this video is just one of the functions. And there are uh, a few more tutorials that are coming up that will describe various other features. But on, in this one, we'll focus on how to dynamically configure Google Map component uh, to center on a specific location. Uh, before we do this, let's jump into the logic setup of Google Map just to review what's available. So for this, select the Google Map component and click the logic button. And in here, you see there are, uh, there, are there are a lot of options. So there are some events and there is a uh, a bunch of various data binding properties. So as far as the events, these are the standard ones before mount, unmounted, before unmount, which is essentially a timeline for any uh, component that exists in UI Builder. Uh, and the mounting is the process of preparing the components to become uh, positioned and uh, rendered on, on the page. The visibility change is also self-explanatory. When you change visibility to make it hidden or visible, this, is, this event is triggered. Uh, the zoom event and pan event also are self-explanatory. When the user of your app zooms or pans, then these events are invoked so you can execute some additional logic. Now, as far as the data binding components, I think most of them are self-explanatory. Like for instance, the map type, you can select between satellite or hybrid or street uh, rendering of the map. The zoom level in here in this logic, you can control the actual zoom of the map. I think it goes between 1 and 20 or maybe 0 and 20. Uh, in fact, for most of these, if you just look up the API for Google Maps, uh, specifically the JavaScript API, you'll find a description for pretty much every one of these. In, in this lecture, we will focus on the map center logic, but there will be other ones where we, where we will review the zoom logic, map type, the scale, as you can see, there is street view. So everything that is uh, commonly understood, what Google Maps is capable of, is available in here. So once again, in today's uh, video, in this one, we'll focus on the map center and we will touch the markers logic, which is the logic that controls uh, what markers to display on the map. So in here, uh, what we will do is let's just jump into the map uh, where is it? Map center logic and add logic. So in here, you will see that there is a return. And the way Google Maps component works is that uh, whenever you operate on a location, that location is represented as an object. That object must have two properties. One of them is called the LAT, L-A-T, which stands for latitude, 
and the other property it must be called LNG, which stands for longitude, all lowercase let and, and LNG. So to make it very simple, trivially simple, let's, dis let's display the map that is centered on Dallas, Texas. And why Dallas? Because I'm in Dallas, so that makes it, uh, I could have picked any other location, I'll just pick Dallas, Texas. So what, what I'm going to do is I will open another browser and in there I'll just Google uh, the latitude and longitude uh, decimal values for Dallas, Texas. So let's go for Dallas decimal uh, coordinates. So in here you see that the uh, Dallas uh, latitude is this value and then the longitude is this value. So what I'm going to do is return an object that has two properties. And as we said, it is LAT and the other property is going to be LNG. I know this demo is not very interesting from the functionality perspective, but it is indicative and I think quite useful to just kind of get a feel how the Google Maps component works from the codeless perspective. So in here in this LAT and LNG properties, we'll just return static coordinate values. For now it is zero and then I will just copy and paste from that search. So here the LAT is going to be this value. And the LNG, the longitude is this value. So now with this logic in place, if I just run this application, it's hard to call it an application, it's more of a, just a demo of a component, but nevertheless, it is rendered. And as you can see, we are centering right on Dallas, Texas. And uh, that's the that's the demo. Uh, very straightforward. Of course, in here, in the map center logic, this value could be dynamic. And we will put together an example in this lecture that shows how to make it dynamic. But also, let's take a look at the, at the other type of logic, which is the marker. So in addition to centering the map on Dallas, Texas, let's also put a marker right on this location. So I selected this create object. I'm going to copy it right into the markers logic. And the markers logic must return a list containing the objects that we create, such as this, and then these two other connectors, we can get rid of them. So as you can see, the markers logic operates on the objects of the same kind that has LAT uh, and LNG properties, and it must return a collection of these. So you, this way you can actually have uh, multiple markers on your map, depending, of course, on your use case. Now, with this in place, let's rerun this app. And as you can see now, in addition to centering on Dallas, we also have a marker that represents that very location that we used in our codeless logic. So now that you have an idea how the markers can be placed, how the map can be centered, let's put together a demo that is more dynamic and perhaps a little bit more useful and interesting than what we have. In order to do this, what I'd like you to do, actually, let's just delete this map component with all the logic that it has. And uh, if you switch to backend, you will need to uh, download and install the database that is referenced in the uh, in the link for in the description for this video and you may already have it because we use exactly the same database in the previous lectures so in the city table and you already might be familiar with it there is a, a column called location and this location is a, of a special type called point and point is a geospatial data type which is used in the canvas database to uh, store locations. In fact, we can visualize the location uh, that we have here in the map. So these are all the individual locations for the cities that we have in this data table. And, and as you can see, Backendless uh, Console uses the map component here as well. But that's going to be on the point. So we will be using the location column from the city table to uh, visualize the location of a city. For this, what I'd like you to do is uh, drag and drop the data table component uh, and select the city table 
in here for this component. For the columns, we can disable many of them, such as updated, created, owner ID, object ID, we do not need. And we do not we even need to show the location because it's going to be in the internal format that is called uh, GeoJSON. But uh, in here, we will just display name, population, and then the district, like local district where that city is in. That's all. And what I'd like to do in this demo is when a row is selected in this data table, I want to show that city on the map, which is uh, already more interesting than what we have done before. So for this, I will drag and drop the Google Map component, place it right here. And in the logic for the data table, if we go to the on record selected event, in here, what we will do is we will place the actual location into the page data. And then the actual location is going to be the object that is inside of the selected record. So what you will need to do is grab location column from selected record. So the location is the name of the column. And as if you remember, it contains the data of type point. Whenever you get the property that is a point in the backendless database, you already get an object that can be consumed by Google Maps. So that LAT and LNG properties are already going to be in the object returned by this component. Okay. So here, if we use, for instance, the property map center, what we will need to do is we just need to use data binding for our map component for this map center property. So once again, a record is selected and that object that is the record is going to be a city object. Using this block, we extract the location property from the city object and we put that value into page data in the that is mapped to the map center property. This object will have the LAT and LNG properties. Now, let's go back to the map and then go to the map logic. And in here, in the map center, there is going to be one thing that we need to do. And that thing is, we go to event handler. And in the event handler, we need to add the following logic. Here's what I did. So this logic needs to be there because the way Google Map works is that if there is a data binding, I could have just specified map center right here. But the way it works is if there is good if there is data binding and by default there's going to be no value map to map center, Google Map just breaks because it starts extracting latitude and longitude from something that doesn't exist and things just break. Therefore, we need to actually have logic. And in that logic, we we check if there is something that sits at the map center. And if it is null, then we return default location. And here I put zeros, which is going to be somewhere in the ocean next to Africa. You could just put your own coordinates, which is what is displayed by default on the map. And otherwise, if this value is there, then we just return it. So that's what this logic is about. Additionally, for the markers, we could just return this thing as well. So let's go to the on markers logic and in here return a list of this. Now this is something that we will need to check. Maybe this will break and we might need to do a check whether it exists or not. So let's see how well that works and let's just run it. So since it doesn't work, I assume the problem is in the markers logic because in here we're not checking if that value is there or not. So let's add the same test that we have in here. In fact, select this and copy it into here. And what we will do is if this value is not there, then we will return an empty list. 
so there are no markers to render. And if this value is there, then we will create a list with this value. And I'm kind of glad that we uh, keep the errors that we run into in the videos, just so you can see what's going on. Uh, and uh, if you run into the same problems, you'll know that there is always a way to fix it. So now the markers logic checks if the if there is a value bound in uh, page data, uh, then return a list with that value. If there is not, then return an empty list. And let's rerun this page. Okay, so now we got the data. As you can see, this is a value that is zero, zero, somewhere next to Africa. So let's select, let's say, 50 rows. And uh, we can select, for instance, Delhi. And that's in India. Uh, let's just page through, get to some other cities. Something that I recognize. No, really nothing. Here is Nairobi. There you go. And uh, as you can see, this this is working. Here is Shanghai. Uh, this is working already and does something quite useful because we can just start browsing uh, all over the world and just seeing exactly where those cities are exactly using exactly the same logic that I have demonstrated earlier. So that's uh, that's Google Maps component for you guys. Uh, we will have uh, certainly a few more lectures exploring various other things that you can do with Google Maps. But as you can see, even with just a few little things that we have done with Codeless Logic, we'll already get something quite useful and interesting. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And as always, happy Codeless Coding.